Somebody say amen. You know, I didn't realize it's a long walk from the back out there. I'm going to start sitting on the front. But uh, it's good to be here this morning. My wife and I, we appreciate uh, your kindness and inviting us to come and share the Word of God with you today. You know, one of the writers in the Old Testament said, this is the day the Lord has made. Amen. And he said, we He said we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, there's a lot to grumble about, but there's a lot to be thankful about. Amen. And we shouldn't be grumbling anyway. Someone say amen. 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 You know, grumbling and complaining kept the Israelites out of the promised land. Amen. And, uh, more than likely to keep us out of the promised land if we're not careful. Yeah. So we have a lot to be thankful for. And, and uh, uh, God is good. He's yes. good to us every day. Yes. You know, I want to share on something this morning. We're going to pray in just a moment. But I want to talk about trust. You know, we have found out lately we cannot trust, amen, in the political system. Amen. Amen. And we better not put our trust in the almighty dollar because it's losing ground every day. Amen. But we need to, and especially, you know, we've always needed to put our trust in God. Amen. But as we see things happen in this world today, you know what? We need to just renew that trust all over again. Amen. Before I get into the Word of God, I heard a little story one time that goes along with what I'm going to be preaching about. And back in the day when we didn't have flashlights, there was a man walking along a mountain trail. He had his lantern. He wasn't familiar with that area. And he stumbled, lost his lantern, and slid down the mountain, amen, and landed on a ledge. And there came along a local man that knew the terrain and all, and he knew at that spot where the man had slipped down the mountainside, that it wasn't where he was at on the ledge, about four foot to the bottom. But this man in the dark could not see the bottom. And he began to cry out, somebody help me. Please, somebody help me. And this local man heard him and was standing there. And knowing that it was just a short distance, all he had to do was step out and he'd be on the ground. But he stood there listening to him, and after a while, the man began to call on God. He said, oh, please, God, help me. I've fallen off this mountain. Please, Lord, amen, help me. Help me off this mountain. Listen. And this man listened to him, amen. He, he said, I'm listening to you. He said, I'm God. He said, you go ahead and jump. I've got you. <laughs> and there was a long pause. 
In a few minutes, that man said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> you know what? We're either going to trust God or we're not going to trust God, right? <laughs> you know, we can talk big until the rubber meets the pavement. Amen? Amen. I want to read a scripture out of the book of Psalms and we'll pray. And then I'm going to go to the book of Daniel. I'm going to talk about three Hebrews that's very familiar to us. But in Psalms chapter 9 verse 10, it says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. How many of you know his name this morning? It says, For thou, Lord, hath not forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. I want to be an encouragement to somebody today. Amen. I don't want you to lose hope. The Bible says there is a hope that maketh not a shame. Amen. We got to put our hope in God, church. Amen. You know, the only hope for this nation, and I'm here to tell you, is God Almighty. How many would agree with that? Now, I want you to go to the uh, book of Daniel, chapter 3. We're going to be preaching out of uh, this chapter. And we've, you know, probably heard a lot of messages about the three Hebrew children. But uh, you're going to get to hear one more this morning. But I want you to stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, what? In my name. Now I want you to look around. There's more than two or three here today. Amen. Amen. And you know what? That means he's here. Amen. 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 He's here. He, and I tell you what, if we'll seek him, he'll show up. Amen. And if we'll truly worship him, he'll show up Amen. in this house today. Amen. Father, we, we do thank you for the opportunity to gather in the house of the Lord. Father, we thank you today, God, that there is power in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, it's not by might or power, but by the Spirit of the living God. We invite you, Holy Ghost, into this service today, that you would do a work in the midst of your people. Oh, God, that we would look up under the hills from which cometh our strength, as David says, for our strength coming from God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for keeping us and blessing us and watching over us, Lord, throughout this week, Lord. You are our strength, David said, a very present help in time of trouble. We give you praise. Let's just give him a hand clap of praise and welcome. You know what? The Holy Ghost will reside where he's welcome. Yes, yes. Amen. If I'm holding on to this podium, it's hard to walk with these glasses. Amen. Amen. I went down to, uh, uh, I think I got these at the dollar store. And you know what? They're good for reading, uh, but they're not worth a flip for walking. <laughs> and uh, I used to, you know, I used to kid the church that uh, where we pastored. I said, you know, when I put these glasses on, I uh, if you make faces at me, it won't bother me because I can't see nothing but a blare. <laughs> so I can shut you out. But I want you to go to Daniel chapter uh, chapter 3. And uh, I want to begin reading at verse 8. We know this is familiar, but you know what? Sometimes we need to hear it again. It says, Therefore at that time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. You know, there's always somebody going to accuse somebody. Uh -oh. And it said, they spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, or the solitary in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whosoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. I want to stop there for a moment. Amen. These three Hebrew G, three, excuse, these three 
Hebrew children and they knew what the penalty was for not worshiping the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Amen. They knew that there was a fiery furnace that was awaiting them if they refused to fall down when the music began to play. And even the king said, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a chance, uh, amen, to recant and do what I commanded to do. But I like these three men of God. Yeah. They did not hesitate in telling the king, uh, amen, you can play it all you want to play it. Amen. We're not going to bow down and we're not going to worship any God but the true and living God. You know what, church? We need some more boldness uh, like this in the church today. Amen. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I believe it's time the church, uh, amen, grow some spiritual backbone, uh, amen, and stand up and be the church uh, that we have been called to be. These three young men knew that death was waiting for them, uh, but they would rather experience death than to deny their God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, they had courage. Amen. Look at verse 16. I'll move on down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. <laughs> Amen. In other words, it's already sealed. In other words, we already got our, we had our mind made up before we even assembled here today. They said there's no need for us to waste your time. And there's no need for you to waste our time. Our minds are made up. And they went on to say, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Amen. Now, where I want to preach today, amen, is in verse 18. The first Three words, but if not. Yeah. That's where I want to preach, but if not. Right. They said, but if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, <laughs> nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Yeah. In other words, they were saying, whichever way it goes, Amen. hey, then we're going to remain true to our God. Yeah. Now I want to preach a while this morning uh, on a subject that, that that may not be real popular in some religious circles. <laughs> but but I'll explain myself as I go. And when you hear my opening remarks, you might think that I'm questioning God. But as we get into the message, I am not questioning God. I'm just bringing out some facts from the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. See, we've heard a lot of messages. I don't know about you, I have. And I'm sure that you have. Amen. On uh, the miracle working power of God. Man. And He is a miracle Man. worker. Man. We've heard a lot of messages on God's healing power. Yeah. Amen. His providing power. Yeah. Amen. His delivering power. That sometimes we take for granted that God will, Amen. that God will, listen to me, heal every sickness the way we want him to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen, that God will meet every financial need in our life the way we're expecting him to. Yeah. Yeah, come, on. come on, how many of you with me? Think about what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, that he will open every, amen, prison door, he will provide power, amen, delivering power, amen, that he'll put together every broken marriage, amen, after all, it's God's will that our marriage be blessed, amen, the way that we want it to. Yeah. Come on now, come on, bring it, brother. You know, the Bible says, who has known the mind of God? <laughs> How can we figure out, amen, his ways? 
Now, I don't want you to take me wrong today. Don't go out saying that preacher said God can't heal. Amen. God is the healer. I'm not saying that God won't heal and that he can't heal and that he can't heal immediately. Amen. Amen. God does meet financial needs. Amen. God does open prison doors. And he does restore broken marriages. But sometimes our prayers are not answered immediately. So what are we going to do? Are we going to give up? Or are we going to just keep praying? Are we going to be like that little little woman that sat on the porch of the unjust judge? Hey, then that judge said, I don't fear God and I don't regard man, but this little woman's about to worry me to death. Yeah. 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 Honey, she had some stickability and that's what we need today. Yeah. If you don't get your answer the first time, hey, then go back again. If you don't get it the second time, Go back again. The Bible says Elijah sent his servant how many times? Seven. Seven times. What if he'd have seen him one time? He'd come back and say, I don't see nothing. And the prophet said, well, that's what I really expected. I wasn't looking for anything anyway. It's like the woman that read in the scripture where Jesus said, Say unto this mountain, cast into the sea, and it shall be done. While she had a mountain out, amen, in the distance from her uh, kitchen window, and she said, Mountain, be cast into the sea. Later she came back and looked and said, Just as I expected, it's still there. <laughs> amen. What are you saying? Without faith. Amen. Hebrews. Amen. Chapter 11 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that what? Coming to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that occasionally seek him. Once in a while seek him though. He says what? Diligently. That means if you don't get your answer the first time, go back again. He kept seeing the servant, and the servant came back the seventh time and said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And Elijah said, that's enough. Amen. God's about to turn the heavens loose. Honey, if the church would pray like Elijah, amen, we would experience a revival like we've never seen. I believe that. Amen. But God don't always heal the way we expect him to heal. Think about Naaman. Naaman was a great man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He went down to the man of God, Elisha. He already had it in his mind how God was going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's going to come out and make a big to-do because I'm really important. Oh. And you know, I really thought about that. Why did God tell this man, matter of fact, Elisha didn't even go to the door. He sent his servant. Yeah. <laughs> Why did God, amen, tell him to go to the Jordan? Amen. Well, he had to be obedient, of course. But I think it was, amen, to knock some of the starch out of him. Yeah. A lot of times we got too much pride, can you say amen? amen. To receive what God wants to give us. One of the servants said, if he'd have told you to do some great thing, yeah. amen, you'd have been over backwards to do it. What did he say? He just said, go, amen, wash in the Jordan River and receive your healing. And we know the end of the story. Amen, that it happened just like God said it'll happen. How many of you know it happens just like God? Amen. 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 But sometimes God does not bring deliverance the way we think he should or repair a home or marriage the way we think he should or provide a financial need. Amen, it might be God's trying to teach us to have more faith. Amen. Amen, to trust him. That's what I'm preaching about today. To trust him. Amen. Come what might may. We don't know what we might face tomorrow. We don't know what this nation might face tomorrow, even before the end of this day. 
But listen, church, we have to trust that everything is in God's control and there's nothing out of God's control. The Bible says he'll make them when there seems to be no way. You know, I am convinced that all of this, and I'm not going to get into it very deep, but all of this that's taking place in Washington, I'm convinced that it's not a flesh battle. It's a spiritual battle. Yes, it is. I'm convinced of that. Amen. And I do believe, amen, that the church has the upper hand. Amen. amen. The Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. You can't fight a spiritual battle with carnal weapons. And you can't fight a spiritual battle, amen, amen, a carnal battle with spirit. You have got to take the word of God, amen, and use it, amen, it's a soul. Yes. Yes. He said what to the pulling down of strongholds. Friend, if we've ever lived in a time when there's strongholds in high places, but God said what? We could pull them down. Amen. We could pull them down. Amen. I don't believe the answer is in a political party. It's not in a human, a man. But I believe the answer is in the church of the living God. When my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Honey, when we'll get our lives right with God. Amen. And seek his face with all of our heart. When revival comes to the church, it comes to the nation. For as the church goes, so does the nation. Can you say that? You believe that? I believe that. Yes, I do. You know what? We have to remember that God works according to his will in his time. Amen. I tell you, I, I've, I've had some frustration. Lord, why is this allowed to go on? But I know there's a purpose in it. I know there's a purpose in it. Isaiah 55 and 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yes. You can't outthink God. You won't be able to out. Amen. You can't outguess God because you don't have to guess. Amen. He knows Amen. what he's going to do. Amen. God sees the whole picture, church. Amen. We only see just a part of it. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, it says we see through a glass darkly. Amen. But then face yeah. to face. Yeah. Amen. No, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Yeah. You know, most of the time we're concerned with the now circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Not only do we need to trust God, we need patience. Can you say amen? amen. Amen, Lord, please give me patience, but hurry up, right? That's the way we pray. Amen, we want the situation to happen right now. Amen, well, now circumstances. God, I need an answer now. Now answers, now results, and now deliverance. And that's good. I like now results. But we've been programmed. We're the presto generation. Amen. Stick it in the microwave. Go by the drive-thru. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Instant grits. When I was growing up, Mama cooked them on the stove. Yeah. You can even get bacon now that's already cooked. Just put it in the microwave and wave it up. Warm it up. Or wave it up. Everything's instant. And if we're not careful, even the church, we get to that place, we want instant. Amen. Gratification. We want the prayer met now. Maybe yesterday would have not been too soon. They that wait upon the Lord. Oh, what he says shall renew their strength. You want to soar like an eagle? Learn how to wait on the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know what? You'll not grow weary. Is that what the word says? If you learn to wait on the Lord. And we all have need of patience. Amen. The Bible said tribulation work in patience. That's probably why we don't like to pray for patience. Because we know it works hand in hand. But trust in the Lord. Regardless, these men trusted in God. I've got to move on. You know what? God is concerned with our mouths. How many of you believe that? I do. God's concerned about everything in our life. But I want you to know he's also concerned in our development. Amen? Yes. 
Yeah. It takes time for corn to grow. Yes, it does. It takes time and natural for anything to grow. The farmer doesn't stick the corn in there and expect to get up the next day, amen, and pull roast ears. Yeah. It takes time, amen, to, and, and you know what? We might need that time for God to develop some things in our life. See, God is more concerned about you than about your situation. Yes, you know why? Because your situation doesn't rattle God. Right. It doesn't cause God to walk the floor at night. It does us. Yeah. I had to repent a while back. I had anxiety over all the chaplain, amen, in the U.S. lately. And, and I was kind of filled with anxiety. I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm operating out of a spirit of fear instead of a spirit of trust. Yes, yes, yes. Because I recognize that nothing's over till God says it's over. Amen. 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 You know, Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 and 7 said, Lest I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of revelation there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the master of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. He said in verse 8, 12, chapter 12, 2 Corinthians, For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might be removed. Yeah. Now, Paul was a praying man filled with faith. Yeah. And, and God heard this prayer, but he did not meet his request. Right. Why? There was a purpose. Yeah. Why was that? Hey, Amen. He said here, and he said unto me, Paul, my grace yeah. is for, sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's answer to Paul was no, but that no led Paul to a deeper understanding Amen. of the grace of God. Oh, yes. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't know what God's setting you up for. See, God doesn't set you up for failure. It may appear and even look like failure. But the Bible says that God be for us. Look at your neighbor and say he's talking to you. If God be for us, who? Paul said who can be against us? So God may be setting you up for something that you just can not imagine. Amen. Paul's reply, both gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. You know what? That's not a man that's defeated talking. That's, right. that's a man that's talking, that's walking in victory. My question to you, church, is one that's not popular and not often considered, but one that must be asked but nevertheless. What will you do if God's answer is no? What will you do if God's answer is not now? That's really what God is saying. Yeah. Not now. What will you do if God does not deliver you? What will you do if God does not heal you? See, sometimes we become so conditioned to the fact that God will say yes that we don't know how to act when he says no. Amen. Amen. The house I grew in, I knew how to act when I was told no, because I got told no a lot. Amen. In my house, we didn't have time out. Not like they do today. Uh -uh. Honey, I didn't like time out then. It was time out behind the shed. Yeah. Amen. If they had time out like they got now, I would have been the happiest boy in life. <laughs> Amen. I'd have looked sad when they said, go to your room. Amen. I even tried to produce some tears. But when I shut the door, I went, Woo! Yes! <laughs> My daddy didn't believe in that kind of time out. Matter of fact, he had never been introduced to it. <laughs> the only one that needed time out is after he got through. I needed time out. <laughs> you know, it might do well for us to take talk of our experience with God and we need to say I know that God can heal yeah. 
I know that God can put my home back together. I know that God can save my lost children. I know that God can provide my financial needs. But if not, but if not, I'm still going to love him. But if not, I'm still going to trust him. We need to take a lesson from these three boys. Hey man, he said, if not, I'm going to still serve him. I'm going to worship him when I feel good. I'm going to worship him when I feel bad. I'm going to praise him when I've got hey man, a dollar in my pocket or I ain't got a dollar nowhere. I'm still going to worship my God. Yeah. But if not, that's what I'm talking about today. What are we going to do if not? This is what Shadrach, Meshach, how do you like to have them names? And Abednego <laughs> said, we know that God, they said it, is able to deliver us out of the fire furnace. We know that God can send angels from heaven to bear us up and out of this crowd. We know that God could kill every one of our persecutors, including you, O King. We know that the same God that opened up the depths of the Red Sea can also keep us from this fiery furnace. We know that our God is able to deliver us, O King. But if not, see, they didn't know what was going to happen at this point. They said, but if not, we will still trust him. My question is, are you still going to trust him? Are you still going to trust him? Oh, Job, he had a rough time. Job was a man of God. The Bible, we've read the book of Job. He trusted God. He prayed daily. He prayed for his children. He was an honorable man. The Bible said that he was the greatest man of the East. And you know what? One day, the angels met with God. We know an old Lucifer. You know, he was an angel before he was a devil. Y'all know that, don't you? <laughs> hey, man, he got booted out. Yeah. They didn't have a convention. God didn't call for a vote. He just kicked him out. Amen. <laughs> but he came with the, with the angels, and God said, Have you considered my servant, Job? Yeah. And you know what, old... Satan said, he said, yeah, I considered him. Amen, but you built a hedge around him. That means old Satan had been investigating. Yeah. He'd been trying to find a break in the wall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he said, I can't get to him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, oh. And you know what? God said, yeah, I'm going to move the wall. I'm going to let you get to him. Yeah. Yeah, and then one morning he woke up. And I mean the whole world. I mean the devil and the world and everything was against him. I mean the devil throwed everything against him. Yeah. Amen. He lost his wealth. He lost his children. He lost his living, his livestock. Amen. His wife wasn't being too kind to him either. I mean, you're talking about waking up to a bad day. Yeah. He had a rough day he woke up to. And you would think, and Job, Job didn't know why. See, sometimes we don't know why we in a trial. That's, true. That's, right. That's where trust comes in. He don't know. He was praying. He was doing all the right thing. He hadn't blasphemed God. Amen. He hadn't treated the poor unkindly. Amen. He wasn't in a backslidden condition. He was serving God. Yeah. He had been faithful. Yeah. You know what? That in itself is a test, church. Amen. Right. The Bible says, you know what old Job said? He said, naked came I into this world. Naked, I'm going to leave this old world. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible said in all these things, Job did not charge God foolishly. Amen. Hallelujah. Even though he didn't understand why all this was coming against him. I mean, did you see how the devil had it set up? One bad news bear after the other. Amen. See, the devil will send bad news to you. And friend, we've had a shared load of it lately, haven't we? Yeah, Amen. 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 Bad news on every hand. But thank God this morning, church, we, amen, don't have to rely on bad news or fake news. We've got the good news. Amen. In our lives and in the written word of God. Can you say amen? Thank you, Jesus. 
I'm still going to love him. Amen. See, as far as they knew, they were speaking their final words. As yeah. far as they knew, they were writing their own death sentence. As far as these three Hebrew children knew, they would wake up in glory. If you're a child of God, you can't lose for winning. You know, most games that, that are played, we don't know what the outcome's going to be until the final buzzer, That's right. until the final whistle. That's it. Matter of fact, my team lost yesterday. I don't yeah. know what your team is. Some people watch football. I like to watch a little bit of it. Yeah. Some of the college games, they, they lost because one of their players had a bad attitude. And throw the cleat 20 yards, and they got 10 yards penalty, and the other team won with a field goal. But you know what? We know what the end of the story is. Yes. We don't have to watch the game because the Word of God's done told us what the score is. Hallelujah. Hey, man, we win. Yes. Hallelujah. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be what? Present. Present with the Lord. But these men, what were they saying? As if they were saying, Oh, King, in case we die in this furnace and don't get a chance to tell you again, let us make ourselves crystal clear. <laughs> we will never bow down to a craven image, carbon image. We will never serve your gods. We will never forsake our experience. And we will never turn our backs on God. That's what they were saying in essence. We don't know what's going on or what's going to happen. But let us just say right now that we know God is able. Amen. How many of you know God is able? Amen. How many of you believe God's able to turn this situation that's happening in our nation around? Honey, he's the God of the turnaround. Our, our daughter and our son-in-law, they were on the bed. I mean, they were, I mean, divorce was on its way. Hey Amen. My daughter had already went. We went with her. It was a bad situation. But you know what? The church began to fast and pray. Hey Amen. And seek God and meet at night and fast and pray. And you know what? God turned that thing around. Hey Amen. They're still together. Hey Amen. They were not separated. Our grandchildren didn't have to suffer through that because our God is a God of the turnaround. I've been in this thing too long for you to convince me any other way. Right. Amen. Right. I'm convinced. Amen. I mean, I'll be convinced. I gotta hurry. Amen. I'm convinced Amen. I gotta hurry too. Amen. Amen. But they said, if not, we still gonna worship God. Somebody just needs to say, I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know if God's going to heal me right now or not or later. I don't know if God's going to deliver me or not. I don't know if God's going to meet my financial need. But devil, just in case I don't get another chance to tell you this, let me say it one more time. I know God's able, but if he doesn't, I will still worship him. Amen. I know God can, but if he don't, I'll still serve him. Yeah. If I die in this furnace, if I die in this trial or this sickness, that's okay because I'll just wake up in blood. Amen. 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 I will trust him no matter what the end outcome. How many of you will make that declaration today? Amen. I'm going to trust him regardless of the outcome. Amen. That's what trust is. It's not just a feel good gospel. The just shall live by what? Faith. Faith, Faith is what? The substance Faith. of things hoped for. 11 and 1. The evidence of things not seen. Amen. You don't see it. Hallelujah. But faith is more real. Amen. It's more real than us sitting here today. Faith. Yes. Without it, we can't please him. But faith and trust go together. Yes. We've got to trust God. I don't understand why. You know, you remember James in the Bible? Hey, man, uh, I'm thinking of the king, mean king, that arrested him. 
I've got it in the scripture here, but he arrested James and Herod, wasn't it? He arrested James and he killed James. And the same king arrested Peter. Now they executed James and they put Peter in prison. Both of them were apostles of the Lord. Both of them loved God. What was the difference? Well, Peter, the church, I don't know, the church, I'm sure, prayed for James. But the church had an all-night prayer meeting, yeah. and God brought Peter out of the prison and spared him. Yes, well, that's not fair. Why is it not? Amen. James got to heaven before Peter did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. He was enjoying being in the presence of God. Later on, Peter was executed for his faith. But it wasn't the time. See, God's will and God's time work together, church. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, you might be right on the verge of your miracle. Yes. You might have been praying for your youngins for 30 years. And you might be right on the verge yes. of a breakthrough Hallelujah. in your home, in your financial Thank situation. You, Hallelujah. you might be right on the verge. You know what? We might be right on the verge for a breakthrough. Amen. And I'll just say it in this election. We might be right on the verge Hallelujah. of a breakthrough. Yes. And I'm not trying to stir up anybody's Hallelujah. amen dandruff. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm just saying, you might be that close. You might be that close of having your need met. God answering. He might be waiting at Christmas to make it a Christmas present to you. You know what I mean? Amen. 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 He might have it all wrapped up Hallelujah. in a beautiful box. Yeah. Thank you. you don't know. Amen. He might deliver it on Christmas morning. You don't know. Or it could happen today before the day's over. With. Something you've been praying for. Amen. Something you've been seeking God for. Think about John the Baptist. The forerunner of Christ. Amen. He was faithful. He said, I'm not even worthy to loose his sandals. He pointed him out and said, Behold the Lamb of God, Amen. which taketh away the sins of the world. Yeah. Peter was, I mean, John was put in prison by a woman with a Jezebel spirit. That's right. Yeah. And she determined to destroy him. And you know what? John probably thought, Well, I know deliverance is coming any day. He might have thought that. After all, I'm I'm the forerunner of Christ. And I'm looking to get pardoned or released just any day. But you know what? Jesus heard about it. John, some of his disciples returned and told John and said, John, yeah. said the lame were walking. The sick are being healed. Blinded eyes are being opened. Yes. This is what you introduced to the world, John. Yes. You introduced this one to the world. Come on. You was a little odd. You wore, Hallelujah. you know, can, uh, you wore a uh, girl and eat, and you know, his, his diet wasn't probably a lot of people talked about how he ate. Yeah. You know, locusts and wild honey. Yeah. I could eat the wild honey. It'd take me a while to get past the locusts. <laughs> Wore no skin. He was a rough look. I don't think he would have. He would probably scared a lot of church folks to death if he'd come in and walked into the church. But you know what? He said, You tell John what's going on. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I believe old John, when he heard that, said, Lord, I know you can deliver me out of this. But if not, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if not, but if not, it's been a wonderful trip. It's been a wonderful opportunity Hallelujah. for me to introduce you and to be the forerunner of my Savior. Oh, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, John was saying, but if not. Jesus, I'm not going to be offended. Hallelujah. It's been worth it all. Worth it all.
you know what, church, if we go through this life and there's some things that we prayed for that we don't see them come to pass in our lifetime, that doesn't mean they're not going to come to pass after we pass. Hallelujah. But you know what? When we stand before Jesus, we're going to say it's worth it all. We may not understand everything down here, but I guarantee you there's going to be a day we're going to understand it all. Yes, we will. And we're going to say like Paul, it was worth it all. Yes. What could compare? Thank you, Jesus. What yes. could compare? Hallelujah. And we know the end of this story, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you notice in the text, and I'm, I'm, I'm out there. You notice in the text that they said, you know, they said in the text, and God will deliver us. Right. Our God Hallelujah. will deliver us. Yeah. They said that Hallelujah. as they were talking to the Thank king, Jesus. that our God will deliver us. Yeah. Hallelujah. It may not come in this life. Hallelujah. But they were saying, God's going to deliver us. Hallelujah. That's faith, church. Yes, sir. And they Thank threw him in that Jesus. furnace. And the soldiers that threw him in there, the, it was so hot. See, the devil's going to heat things up for you. Seven times hotter than in that furnace had ever been. It was so hot when they went to throw Hallelujah. them in there, bound. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why they bound them. But they throw them in there. And they died, perish. And that old king looked down. He said, we throw three in here. <laughs> I see the fourth man walking around in there. Yeah. Will you stand with me this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Church, I'm here to tell you. Let me get down here a little closer to you. I'm here to tell you. The fourth man still walking in the fire. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the ropes burned off. Isn't that amazing? The ropes burned off, but they didn't burn. Matter of fact, that old king said, I see a fourth man, and he looks like the son of God. Here's a heathen king. And he says, that's the son of God. Now that blows your mind, don't it? The Bible says he called him out of that furnace, and not even the smell of smoke was on their clothes. Not one hair was singed. God chose to deliver them. See, he's not He's not just the deliverer. He'll get in the middle of your mess. Yes, yes, he will. Praise God. He'll get in the middle of your mess. You know why? Because the Bible says he's a high priest that what can be touched. Hallelujah. To the feelings of our infirmities. Are you struggling today? Are you having trouble trusting him? I think most of us in our lives, somewhere down the road, you know, we've struggled with trust. Lord, it looks like everything's out of control. That's the way I was feeling. But you know what? I went to the Lord in prayer. I got what I call the man cave out back. And I went, that's my prayer place. I said, Lord, it looks like all of this is out of control. It looks like evil's having its way. But I I didn't hear an audible voice. But friend, it come into my heart. God said, good will always overcome evil. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. This thing ain't out of my control. Son, everything is under my <laughs> Will you bow your heads? Father, we love you today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you today, God, that we can stand here together.